I'm talking about the call of God now. I finished talking about the art of hearing. Now I'm talking about the call of God. One pastor, and I'm, I'm, I'm also showing you this from this because I cannot, you know, I cannot speak for long, but the book will stay and you can read it. It's all about this. One pastor, he said he was in the house. He, 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 had, an, he had an accident. And when he, when he had an accident, he was preaching and there was somebody put a, a radio by the side of the pulpit and some equipment. So when he was preaching, he stepped on it. And when, when he stepped on by mistake, it moved on the stage. And when it moved on the stage, he moved his leg like this and he fell down on, on the shoulder. On the shoulder. And when he fell down, the bone here came out of the, out of the joint. But he didn't know. And he got up and he continued preaching. But after he finished preaching, the hand was really paining. And then there was a nurse in, the, in that church who, knew, who worked in an uh, orthopedic hospital. So she said to him, Let, we should go. So they went to the hospital. When they went to the hospital, the doctor took the x-ray. He said, no, it's worse. He said, if your hand was broken, it would have been better. But this one is worse. Because it has come out. You know, look at this place, if it disconnects. So, they are going to do the operation. And you may, you, the hand may not move after. So anyway, they did the operation, whatever. The next morning, early in the morning, the pastor was lying in the bed and he heard some steps. And he looked and he saw barefoot with slippers and he said oh the nurse is coming he said the door opened said early in the morning six in the morning early the door opened and jesus christ walked into the room yeah i tell he said that his hair almost stood up and he came he said he was he came he came from the right side he came round the bed and came and sat, he was lying on the bed and sat on his legs. He said, I could, I could have touched him like this. And he said to him, I've come to talk to you about what happened yesterday when you were preaching. And he sat with him for one and a half hours and talked to him about the ministry. One of the things he told him was that you should thank God that, you should be happy that I allowed the accident that happened yesterday. He said, if I have not allowed the accident that happened yesterday, because you were making a mistake in your ministry, you were not following my call. I called you to, I said, I told you, I called you, I called you to do this, but you were doing something a little, it was preaching, but it's a little different. That's why it's very important. And he said, if I have not interrupted, you would have never lived beyond the age of 55. He gave him the age that he would not live beyond. And you notice a lot of people died by 55. Because your ministry is up to the age of 50. The Bible says in Numbers 8, from the age of 25 to 50, you shall minister. And after that, you do something else. So after 50, sometimes God is not interested in the continuation of your ministry. And it's just a few years to say bye-bye. He told him, you will not have gone beyond the age of 55. Yeah. And he told him what to do. How many would like Jesus to walk into your room? Hmm? And say such things to you. What? As for me, you see, so for me, I look at this and I say, Lord, since I started reading this man's books and started listening to the visions, because so when I listen to him preaching, I hear some of the details of the visions which are not in the books. That's why you, you listen as well as you read. Because when I hear the details of the visions, some of the things that happen, it's fantastic. Hey. I would like that. 
but up till today as i stand i've not yet seen jesus you know sometimes i can pray from morning to evening with my eye closed like this and i say when i open my eyes jesus will be there but he is not there many times so i remember one day i was in, in south africa i was in a hotel i prayed in the morning it was dark it became day throughout the day i prayed till it became night open my eyes like this no jesus what am i going to do will i say that i'm not called no you see there are two ways people are called blessed are those who have not seen blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe god has called them there are a lot of people who don't have this type of fantastic way of being called but god has called them genuinely yeah and 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 in this book this is this is this is my favorite book the my most important book is this one how you can be led by the spirit of god that's most important and this is the most favorite yeah in this one you see everybody and how you are called all the people who are in the bible who have been called are in this book everybody's call everybody's call and how it happened some were called by dreams some were called by two dreams some were called by this some were called by conviction different ways someone was called when he came to stay in the house of the lord yeah some of you when you work in the church for some time you see that you are called that's why church workers are important as you work in the church you start to see the call of god if someone had not come to be in the house of god he would never have heard any call so shall i say that i'm not called if pastors were to preach to people that many are called to serve god but we are rather preaching that people have to be rich people have to have money people should be businessmen people have to get a lot of this order we preach because that's all that we want we don't want people to work for god we don't want to start churches we don't want to do all these things we just want money and many are called i said many are called amen am i going to cry because jesus has not appeared to me he told me to write look at me i've started over 1000 churches without i've not had any vision in fact one day one of my pastors he was uh, you know relative he came to stay in my house and uh, at that time benny Hinn was in ghana having a crusade and after three days he left then later he saw me some months later now everybody in my church knows that i want to see jesus and i haven't seen him yet because i've told them the day that i see i'll come and inform them <laughs> so they're all waiting everybody is waiting to hear <laughs> but this guy came to stay in my house upstairs in my house he was upstairs with me after some months i met him he said bishop i tell you something happened to me when i came to your house i said what happened he said on the second day of the benihim crusade the second day not the first day the second day he said i was upstairs in the room when the door opened and on what i said and jesus came in jesus came into the room and he said to me stretch stretch out your hand stretch out your hand and i said what happened and he said he put something like fire into my hand and my hand started burning and he said to me i've given you a new gift hey. so listen so when he said this i said wow and of course i had to pretend that i'm very happy do you understand what i'm saying i have to show happiness i have to show that wow it's a it's a great thing thank god but inside i was very angry <laughs> because if you are coming to visit somebody's house and the house owner is sleeping there why do you visit a visitor when i am there i am in the house just next door just the next door just next door you pass me by oh gentle savior and you go to the next room a visitor (laughs) 
So I want to I want to say to you, listen. If it seems that you haven't seen any vision, and this guy who has uh, what do you call it, his is uh, Jesus appeared to him, whatever. He has only one church. <laughs> he has only one church, <laughs> and his church is one of my churches. <laughs> So don't be discouraged. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. God can do great things with you. It may not look as if you have a lot of visions and dreams and all these wild things. It doesn't mean you are not called. It doesn't mean you are not called. Yeah, it doesn't mean you are not called. Yeah, it doesn't mean you are not called. God has called you. You are also called. There's a call on your life. And that is why I, I wrote this book. Many, many are called. So I tell you, I want to highly recommend you don't get any book. Get, this is the favorite book. And they are, they are all available. I hope you have some before we, 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 we are able to finish. 